So thank you very much, uh, Asila, for those uh, strong words. And we will actually move on now to watch a short version of the documentary film, The Sharp Edge of Peace. But this is first my distinct pleasure to uh, uh, pass the floor to Mary Street to introduce it. Mary Street. Good afternoon. Ah. Boop. Oh, well. Hello. Can you hear me? <laughs> I hope you can hear me. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. Thank you, <laughs> Foreign Minister of Indonesia. Thank you. Um, excellencies, esteemed leaders, and friends from all around the world. And I want to give heartfelt greetings, especially to our sisters in Afghanistan uh, and all of those who have had to leave their country. We are all gathered here today to express our solidarity with you and to encourage the world community, especially those who continue to do business with Afghanistan, to intervene on your behalf. In 1971, I graduated from college here in New York. And that year, women in Switzerland were granted the right to vote. Women in Afghanistan, of course, had enjoyed that right already for half a century. Women in Afghanistan received the vote in 1919, before, 30 years before the women in France. No, 20, my math is bad. Uh, well before women in the United States received the right to vote. The way that this culture, this society has been upended is a cautionary tale for the rest of the world. In the 70s, most of the civil servants were women, over half the teachers, doctors. There were women jurists, lawyers, in every profession. And then the world upended. And today, in Kabul, a female cat has more freedoms than a woman. A cat may go sit on her front stoop and feel the sun on her face. She may chase a squirrel into the park. A squirrel has more rights than a girl in Afghanistan today because the public parks have been closed to women and girls by the Taliban. A bird may sing in Kabul, but a girl may not, and a woman may not in public. This is extraordinary. This is a suppression of the natural law. This is odd. I feel that the Taliban, since they've issued over 100 edicts in Afghanistan, stripping women and girls of their education and employment, their freedom of, of expression and movement, they have effectively incarcerated half, half their population. And the international community, I, I believe, because the Taliban call themselves, I believe, Sunni, yes. The Sunni community has a special responsibility to, in some way, intervene on behalf of their women and girls. I, I, I feel that the international community as a whole, if they came together, could affect change in Afghanistan and stop the slow suffocation of an entire, half the population who are incarcerated. We're about to watch a very short version of a documentary film called The Sharp Edge of Peace. It's directed by Roya Sadat and it's produced by Leslie Thomas and it gives us a glimpse of the incredible courage and the tireless commitment of four Afghan women <laughs> leaders, the only women who sat face to face with the Taliban during peace talks in 2020. It's one of my, the greatest honors of my life to have the privilege to be here with these extraordinary women. They encourage us and they remind us that a distorted fundamentalist fear of the future can upend a civilization from the, from the inside. 
And now, I hope you enjoy a sharp edge of peace. Thank you. We will watch the movie and we will actually move um, just so we are able to see. So we'll move to the sides. Hope you enjoy the film. Hello, President Paris. No. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Forty-seven days. Forty-seven days. Yes. <laughs> from my mouth to God's ear. And hello, Oprah. <laughs> I can't believe we're having this conversation again. So here we go. You know who the candidates are. You know what's at stake. One candidate promises a divided America filled with lies and hate. And one stands for change. Kamala Harris has more courage, more honor, more guts than this guy ever had. So you decide, are we really going back down that same fucking broken road, or are we moving forward towards hope, towards freedom, towards change? We know a strong middle class has always been critical to America's success. There's promise that lies in change, and the time for change is now. So what the hell are you waiting for? Because if it's the woman thing, it's time to get over that. It's time for hope, for change. It's time to be a man and vote Madam for President, a woman. Mr. Secretary General, world leaders, ambassadors, and distinguished delegates, one year ago I stood before you for the first time in this grand hall. I addressed the threats facing our world, and I presented a vision to achieve a brighter future for all of humanity. Today, I stand before the United Nations General Assembly to share the extraordinary progress we've made. In less than two years, my administration has accomplished more than almost any administration in the history of our country. America's so true. <laughs> Didn't expect that reaction, but that's okay. America's economy is booming like never